name is Don Lucas and I make silver jewelry. I left college and I moved to Flagstaff, Arizona. And I'd never seen Indian jewelry before. And I started buying and selling old jewelry. You could get old jewelry then in the pawn shops and the trading posts. All the trading posts out on the reservations are pawn shops. And you know, every month they would kill pawn, which means that the people that haven't paid for their pawn, their loan or anything, they just take it out and sell the piece. And you could buy old pieces, classic pieces. So we started buying and selling them. Then in about 1971, 72, probably about 72, turquoise got really popular. So of course, when anything gets popular, the swarms come from out from, under the, from out of the woodwork. And all of a sudden, you had guys camping out at trading posts, waiting for them to kill pawn. Well, I'm not going to drive out to a trading post and camp out all night. I mean, I've got a life. So I finally decided I'd teach myself how to make this stuff. And I taught myself how to make silver jewelry. And I was really influenced by the Navajo and Zuni styles. The Navajo is pretty much straight silver work. Uh, and the Zuni is a lot of stone setting. Everything is all fabricated, and that means that you start with sheet or wire or whatever, and you make the, all the little parts, solder them all together, saw it out, buff it, whatever you have to do, set the stones. We buy silver like this in sheet form. And what we'll do is take, we'll cut a strip off about this big, and then we'll grab one of our little cross templates, Whatever design, we have all different shapes and sizes as you can see by these crosses. And I grab a little felt pen here. We'll take the template and draw right on the silver. So we have something to follow when we're doing our stamp work or whatever. And we'll put, you know, several to a strip, like this strip has four, but that's what we start with right there. And then after we do that, we'll take, see this one I have four on. One's already stamped. One's half stamped. I'm going to uh, stamp this one right here. We're going to use this stamp right here. And we're just going to Sometimes if your stamp doesn't go all the way in, you got to sort of hit it again because you want it, you want it to be deep. So it takes and here's a little design we've put in here, right here, this little crosshairs. We put it on paper. The reason we use the paper is so it doesn't get scratched up on this surface when you pound it back, when you pound it back flat. And then we're gonna put a little bit of a design around that stone, just for a little extra touch. This is one of my little teeny that's this little stamp right here. The design it created, we stamped this design, this crosshair design right here in the middle of this cross. And then this little stamp did these little, went in between these little crosshair things to, to shape the stone where we're gonna set the stone. Now the reason we use a big block of wood like this to stamp on is because if we used something like this, it has no support. So you can't be pounding on something with no support. So you want to do your stamping on a big block of wood because this trunk is going to go nowhere. All these tools here I've made over the years. We have just all kinds of tools. I've had a couple made for me, but I've made 95% of them. And I'm going to take one of these little tools and show you how it works. This is a, this is a little button tool. It's called a male-female die. You have your male and you have your female. And I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to take the female here and we're going to pop it right into the silver. We're going to hit this thing and it gives us this design right here. So, then we're going to head on over to the vise. The way these work, we're going to take the female that we just stamped into the silver and we're going to put it in the vise and turn it upside down. And then we're going to take this piece of silver we just stamped and get it hooked right in there, right where it was stamped, and we're going to take our mail tool, and we're going to stamp it like this, and what that does is it bumps it up from the back, so it's sort of three-dimensional. See, it pops it up like that, see how it's been stamped in the back, so you get a little three-dimensional thing, see it popped it up. It's not just flat anymore. And we make little buttons out of this, little study rings or little buttons for whatever. We have all kinds of tools here. Some of these tools I use a lot, some I hardly ever use at all. 
I have my favorite stamps. I probably use about 5% of these tools 95% of the time, and the other 95% about 5% of the time. Whenever I come up with new ideas and stuff, people usually go for them. I mean, you know, because I got lots of stores I sell to and everything, and I always, I'm always trying to change things and make new stuff. That's part of the reason uh, we're probably successful here, is because we're always coming up with new stuff. Okay, now after we have a strip of stamp, process stamped, what we do is we want to texture these. And I'm going to show you a finished piece so you know what that means. See, this isn't real smooth, it's sort of textured. We make our crosses so they look old. We want these things to look like, they, like they're sort of antiques. That's how we do our crosses. So what we do with this piece of silver, we have a block that's really rough over next door. And what we're going to do is turn this upside down and just beat the heck out of it with a leather mallet and it'll texture this. We'll beat it like this, you know, on our little steel block over there. This is Alfredo. Uh, one of my silversmiths, and what he's going to do here is he's going to rough one of these crosses up. These crosses that we showed you before, we're going to rough this up to get the texture on it. As you can see, the block of steel he's using has a real, has a real rough texture here, and it's going to, it's going to give it that old time look. And then the next thing he's going to do is make sure that it's completely flat. And then he's going to take it over here, because Alfredo's the saw man. He's going to take his jeweler saw and he's going to saw this cross out. So you don't want to saw right on the lines. You want to leave a little teeny border around your design work. But as you can see, he's keeping the same distance around the design, all the way around this cross. And then when he's done sawing it out, he's going to show it to you up close. And you can see this little, he left a little border around this uh, tooling work. After we do that, we will solder a bezel on them. This is going to take a 6 by 12 bezel. All these little containers up here have bezels in them. And I'll show you what a bezel is. See this little thing holding the stone right here? That's a bezel. You need to put a bezel on your piece if you're going to put a stone in it, because that's what holds the stone in. First thing we're going to do, we're going to coat this with some magic goo. Actually, what it is is it's boric acid and alcohol. And the reason we coat it is because when you heat silver up to about 1400 degrees, which is what you have to heat this up to to put your bezel on, it sort of discolors the silver. And it, um, what the discoloration is called, it's called fire scale. And it just, it makes your silver oxidize really fast and it's just, it's not pretty. So we coat the piece. I'm gonna set our bezel right there. And we're gonna heat this thing up to about, oh, probably not 1400 degrees, probably about 1200 degrees. So this whole cross is gonna be about 1200 degrees. We gotta get it that hot to make the solder flow. And then when it's that hot, and you can sort of tell, well, I can tell because I've been doing this for a long number of years, but we're just going to touch the solder that, and the solder just runs around that bezel, and it's on there permanently. See these little loops we put on these crosses? The way we make these is we draw them all, we draw out a bunch of little strips on silver, we throw some, we do some engraving down the middle, and then we'll take the little stamps like you've seen and stamp around these little, around the engravings. You get a little design. And then after that, we cut them all up so you have pieces like this. And then we take them and make them round, solder them together, and you end up with uh, loops. You know, this is basically your finished loop right here. So basically, this is your piece after we've soldered the bezel on it. Uh, it's a little nasty looking. You can see there's flux around here. So we're going to put this piece, because it's dirty, we have to get rid of the flux and everything, so we're going to put it in some pickling acid. Now when it's done with the pickling acid, it's going to come out and it's going to be white like this. It cleans everything up so you, have, uh, so you just have clean silver. Then our next step, after it's all cleaned up, is to put it, we're going to oxidize it. So we throw this in a solution of liver of sulfur and water. Sulfur tarnishes silver and it tarnishes it fast. It just turns it black like this because we need to darken this 
so the stamps will stand out when we brush it. Or you won't be able to see the design. See, in this piece, you can't really see the design, but after it's darkened and brushed, then you can see the design really well, and that's why you have to oxidize it. We're gonna buff one side of this bracelet and leave the other side black. This has been oxidized, so Alfredo's gonna buff. Alfredo, I say we buff, buff right here, and just this edge right here, and we'll leave this black, and we'll leave this black, and then we can show them the difference, okay? okay. That'll be, this piece is a new piece, but it's just been oxidized, so it's really black. Okay, that's the side that's been buffed, and that's what we started with, the black. That was the oxidized part, and after Alfredo buffed it, we've got, it gets shiny like that. You use a buffing wheel to make, to shine it up. But you have to realize that, you know, I basically run the business, and I do a lot of the, most of the design work, and I do a lot of layout work, but I've got people here that work for me that pretty much do all the work, and they're all very talented people. I'm very talented. I'll show you a few of these stones. This is Verisite, the stone from Colorado. Now this is called denim lapis. And the reason they call it that is because it's the same color as denim blue jeans. Then we have this green. This green is a gaspiite. This is the stone from Australia. This comes from a zinc mine in Australia. It's the only place in the world this stone comes from. This it's red coral. It comes from the Mediterranean Sea and it's pretty much all processed uh, in Napoli, Italy, where that comes from. This is pink coral. This is the same kind of a, uh, it comes out of the Sea of China, but it's a different color. You see it's pink and this coral is red. And this stuff all pretty much comes from China and Japan. And then we have the orange. Now this comes from a, an oyster shell. It's called a spiny oyster shell. And then this is turquoise, of course. This comes from the Sleeping Beauty mine in Arizona. So I think what we're gonna put in this cross here today is some of this verisite, because I sort of like that verisite. It'll look nice. First thing we have to do is put a little sawdust in here, because we have to back the stone. The stone has to sit on something. We just can't throw it in there. We're not gonna glue it in there. Picking up this little stone, seeing if this little bugger's gonna go in. And that stone looks like it might go in. We're gonna take that thing and we're gonna press it in real good. Blow the extra sawdust. And then we take this tool, which is called a burnishing tool, and we burnish around the stone. We push the bezel in, so it's gonna hold the stone in. And that's basically the finished piece right there with the stone and everything. I like, I like doing this. I like, you know, designing, I, you know, of course it's a business to run, so it's not all peaches and roses, but it's, uh, I feel like God gave me this talent. And uh, I feel like I'm using the talent he gave me to do this. And I'm just, and it's very satisfying.